We, if we want to be powerful artists, we can't jump into being an artist and jump out of the artist. And one of the issues with becoming an artist is that we find ourselves, especially since a lot of artists are women, they become mothers, and then they become artists. And as soon as one mother calls, they stop this and they go over here like this. And so they constantly go like back and forth. To be an artist is a continuous thing. Now it's great when you have a coach once a week or classes once a week that you go to and you have the responsibility of consistently always doing that. Now this is adult education. Now when you stopped for a while, I called you a couple of times. Now I could have put on my leather outfit and I could have brought my whip and I could have driven to your house <laughs> and I could have forced you into the car, but I would have probably gotten thrown in prison by your husband. <laughs> it's like, well, how do we create that possibility for ourselves? How do we actually make people um, be inspired? How do, like you said, you need something that's, and the thing that's really important is being self-motivated, you know? When you say I'm too busy, what are you focusing on? I have to clean I the know, house, I have to do so much Different things. things that are going on in our lives and depends on how yeah. sensitive you are. I don't know. My daughter asked me, Mom, um, so how you can don't paint? So can you live without painting? I said, yeah, I can live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but she said, it means that you are not artist. Artist, real artist, he, he cannot live without painting. I don't think all so. All the time. So to be a real artist, you have to be painting all the time. Yeah, really? That's what she said. Really? Uh, she said, uh, it means you're not. Probably. Many yeah. artists are stuff painting. I know, we look at Vermeer, and I just, I just did some new, they have some new information about Vermeer and his life. And um, he didn't paint a lot of paintings, I figure around 47 paintings altogether. Um, and there were a lot of things that he was tied up with, literally, that um, kept him from painting. But for, paint, for him, painting was an escape. I mean, one of the reasons why his family, his, his lifestyle was in such torment. He came from such a bad background. Um, and then when he married into this family, even that was a very dysfunctional family. Um, I mean, the, his wife's brother tried to stab her and things. I mean, it's just the incredible stuff that was going around him, not to mention the kids in the house and stuff. So they think Vermeer primarily painted be, to get away from that. And that's why with all the turmoil in his life, his paintings were like a sanctuary. And they said it, it was probably very likely that he would lock himself up in his studio to be by himself and create that. And so in the midst of chaos, you can actually create a possibility of yourself to be relaxed and, and you know. So even if you're not painting, you can always be creating, you could always be thinking, you always could be watching. Uh, this holiday I had guests up in our, our ranch up in Mount Shasta. <laughs> and there wasn't a moment that we weren't like, oh, look at that, how would you paint that? You know, look at the lighting effect. Oh, come here, watch the mountain. I mean, so in that process, you're always creating. To be an artist means that you get up and you see the world all the time. And I doubt very seriously that even though you weren't in class, you weren't awake. Because you are the soul of an artist. You are. You embody that. You have talent. And oftentimes I tell students I would much rather have a student that has no talent but wants to do something than a student that does. <coughs> okay? A student that has talent oftentimes takes it for granted. They can figure they can pick it up. They can put it down. It's no big deal. So it's really hard to keep those people motivated and on track. It's much more, more uh, interesting or much, much more likely that a student who wants to become like you, they have the talent, and a lot of people have said, oh, if I could just paint like her, I would be so happy. And even last night, I had that conversation with somebody, not using you, but she said, oh, if I could only, and she brought her cell phone and she brought an artist, she said, that's what I want to paint like. And she looks at her paintings and she's frustrated. And she was in my workshop in Mount Shasta. And she did a fabulous painting. I mean, a fabulous painting. Unbelievable painting there, right? This was our conversation last night. And so, um, so she's like, I'm not happy with this. I'm not that, I'm not. And I'm like, hold on. I said, a year ago, you weren't even painting. 
And if I brought this painting to you a year ago and say, in a year from now, you're going to paint like this, you would not believe me. Isn't that the conversation I had with her? Okay. You would not believe me that you would be this good. And she goes, yeah, whoa. She like woke up. And I said, you know, the problem now is that you've gotten so good that you're starting to look around at how other people are painting and you're going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And I would say that everybody who is really a great artist looks around them and says, my work has got to be more. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. I'm not good enough. I won't be. And that's kind of a default for people. It's like, I'm not good enough. You know, that's kind of a default that we have, mm -hmm. primarily because how a lot of people were, were brought up. So you always feel like, you know, there's something lacking or missing in you. That's why a lot of people don't have a lot of confidence, especially when it comes to art, because the first time you ever showed your work of art, somebody said, oh, it doesn't look like a dog. It looks like a horse. And you were devastated. Okay. So she brings up her work. She says, I'm not learning anything. I go, a year ago, you couldn't even do this. And I said, this is a plain air painting, which is on top of everything else more complicated. And she looks at me and she goes, you're absolutely right. You know? But the problem is, how do we stay motivated to keep on? And even through the holidays, how do we keep on painting when the world is around us collapsing? Oftentimes, when we say we're too busy or I don't have time, what happens is that we're focusing on ourselves. We're developing excuse patterns. And uh, when we develop excuse patterns, we usually end up believing them. And then before you know it, they become a prophecy. And then what happens is that you stop classes for three years. And then you wake up and you go, I was a good painter. And now I don't even remember. You know, first thing you said, you came to class. I didn't even remember how to pick up a brush. And all of a sudden, you get this panic like, oh my god, I'm not good enough. It's too late for me to go back. And I've wasted all this time. I've done other things. But yeah, I want to get back to painting. The thing is, the urge to create is always there. Acknowledge it and make it part of your life. Make it actually the most important thing. So when Christmas comes up or holidays come up, you don't put yourself aside. You still become that. It's like a lawyer doesn't stop becoming a lawyer over Christmas. Yes, for sure. The president doesn't stop during presidency because it's Christmas or whatever like that. Your husband didn't stop his business because there was a holiday. He's lucky he's got a wife. He handled, she handled everything. But his mind was constantly thinking about going back to the office. You know? And that's what successful people do. If you want to become a successful artist, you have to imagine yourself as that's your identity. That's who you are. You are now an artist. And a lot of the people I give with coaching calls, it's amazing when they have that breakthrough. They go, Oh my God, I'm actually allowing myself to become an artist. They're allowing it. And the thing is, you can't go, you go to college and, and get a degree in painting or in art or whatever like that. And then you can like say it's like a lawyer. But the way that we're brought up, there, art is so insignificant in our society that allowing yourself to participate in something that's so insignificant makes it really easy to kind of fluff it off. Your husband's work is more important than being an artist. So you support him in that. But yet, what you guys do, very few people can do. Most people can learn to be a lawyer, a doctor. You can open up a book and learn how to become an architect. But we gauge our society by what? How much money you can make. No. <laughs> by the art that's created. We look into history and we look at the art that's created. And the art that's created is a reflection of who we are as a society. That's how important art is. That's how important being a painter is. And allowing yourself to slip. And, and, and let go of that. It's like letting your husband all of a sudden decide he didn't want to do his work anymore. What would happen? Your life would go into a tailspin. You know? He has to do that. So you have to self-motivate yourself as if you would stop painting, your entire world will fall apart. 
And for many people who are serious about painting, that's actually what happens. So like the Power to Create class, the reason why that was so phenomenal is because for a very short period of time I was your boss. <laughs> and so you were in class, you had to take the full class, and then you had to take the Power to Create class. In the Power to Create class, every week you had to complete five paintings. Okay, on top of, no, that was my request. Mm -hmm. And do a hundred drawings, remember that. <laughs> so, so for those of you who, who can imagine, to finish five, I ask you guys to do one painting over three weeks, over Christmas vacation, and how many of you kind of got to it? Um, in the Power to Create class, in the first week, I get a lot of you know, feedback, a lot of kickback. And as, the, as other people who are completing the request start to actually fulfill the request, the people who are saying, oh, I don't have time, I don't do this, and you know, I can't do that, I don't know, they like realize that their excuses are invalid. The problem is, is that they haven't arranged their life. And I remember working with you, I mean, you, you're busy, you're out of, you know, you, you're the furthest, one of the first people who drove to class. Um, you have a lot of commitments, your paintings were big, they were powerful, and you always, always reached way out of your comfort zone. And we gave yourself a, a free space to do that. You always came to class with something, and oftentimes all five pieces. And I remember towards the end, you were totally burned out. Totally burned out. So much so that at the end of the two weeks, uh, at the end of a, one of the weeks where we had to do five self-portraits of yourself. Remember, everything was in stages of fives. Why did I have five of them? Because the first two self-portraits are easy. The last three are difficult. And so she did one, she did another, she did another. This is on top of the following week, the, the previous week where she did five other paintings of something else. That the last one that she did, she was so exhausted. She sat in front of it and it was a large painting, 18 by 24, and she did the entire thing with finger paint. She took her oils and she painted it. And you know, you're a very beautiful lady. And she had her hair apart. She was in her studio. She was wiped out. She, her, she was kind of like leaning there like she's just been through a war. And she painted this intuitive, wonderful, wonderful painting. One of the best paintings that I had ever seen in the Power Crate class. And she brought that in. You remember that. You remember how you felt at that point when you were painting that? You were at, your, you know, but the thing is you still got it done. And it was fabulous. Because oftentimes when we stop resisting, then all of a sudden power comes in. And oftentimes, even a lot of you resist doing the homework assignments. A lot of you think, oh, I want to go do it, but you resist. And before you know it, it's all of a sudden Monday night, and you're like, oh boy, I need to get to it. And then you should go, God, if I would have just started earlier, then, you know, I would have had something extraordinary. So part of it is time management. You have to manage your time. Part of it is for having a deadline. I'm one of those people, my taxes are done October 15th. Up to the minute. I mean, I, sometimes I don't even sign them. I have to have my bookkeeper have the okay to sign them because I'm so late. I procrastinate with something that I can do in a very short period of time. Um, up until past the deadline, past the, and I mean, I've done it for so many years, I know what it's like to be that person, okay? But it's not extraordinary, and oftentimes when I finish it, I go, God, why didn't I just get it over with? <laughs> so, so, you know, the thing is actually setting goals and setting deadlines. You say you want to do something extraordinary. In the Advanced Power to Create class, what we do extraordinary is that we create an art show. That's why? Cool. Yeah, but why do we do that? So that's a, there's a goal, something to work towards. For some of you, Having a portfolio online would be something you'd work towards. Entering, right now, I am trying to work on and getting my work into a certain competition in New York City. So what that has done is that I contacted them and I said, what does it take to be in your organization? And they told me, change everything how I paint, right? You know, the two paintings that you see me working at home. But a completely different style, technique and stuff because I ramped it up. So if you want something to motivate you, 
then say you want to join the um, Plain Air Society or, or OPA, you know, the uh, Oil Painters of America um, Society, which are big and they have criteria to get into. And when you read that criteria, you could say, and then look at their work and go, what's missing in my work is looser brush strokes, more interesting subject matter, more of this. Ask them, when's your deadline for submittals? How do you submit? What is your protocol? People who come in and, and enter, what do you turn down? You know, and, and that would be a goal. So that would give you that kind of thing. I mean, I can impose goals. Creating a artist statement and inspiring others. When you're focused on yourself, you know, when you're sick and you're at home sick, you can really sit there and go, I am so sick. I am going to die. <laughs> I am so, nobody should be as sick, I am the sickest person in the world, right? right? And then all of a sudden somebody calls you up and says, guess what, you want Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> be at your front door in three minutes. Man, you could pull that up and pull yourself out. You can motivate and generate yourself in an instant. When you focus on not being inspired, you can change that like that by changing your perception. So if you're sitting there focusing on, I'm not inspired. <sighs> Why do I do this anyway? Chris's letter, her Christmas letter, the first thing I read on her, she says her house is going to burst because she's painting so much that there's, and I'm like going, good. I'd love to see a house. I mean, imagine six o'clock news. House explodes because artists painted too many paintings. I mean, that would be an awesome goal. But do you stop because there's a lot of paintings out there? Because you can. You could give yourself that as an excuse. You can give yourself an excuse that you're too busy. You can give yourself an excuse that classes cost too much. You can give all kinds of excuses and you can believe them all. But they're not powerful. What's powerful is to become an artist. To join that group of, of our society. That is really special. Because what you guys do is phenomenal. Very few people are able to do. In fact, you tell your friends, come to art class, and they tell you, no, I don't have talent. And most of you friends will sit there and go, how can you do that? I can't imagine doing that. I can't imagine having that kind of talent. And you're going, oh, if you think that's talent, you should see the rest of the people in my class, right? I mean, even you put yourselves down when it comes to like talking to your friends about it, let alone getting other people to do it. But it is such an exclusive <coughs> idea. This is such an exclusive thing that thinking not to do it can actually turn into pain. And then you regret time that you've spent not doing it. And you go, wow, three years gone by and I did this and I did that, but not any of the, the, the rewards of, of having um, accomplished some good paintings and stuff. And by the way, this is your whipping. You said you want me to whip you. I'm whipping you. Thank Does it you. feel? Does it feel like? Ah! A little bit. Next week I'm going to be after Jean, but this week it's kind of focused to you. <laughs> so anyway, so we could kiss. I, you know, the thing is, I am the same as you guys. Everybody is. They, they asked, you know, Hammerstein. They said, "How do you produce such fabulous work consistently all the time, and so much of it?" He goes, I don't give it any thought. I go down to my studio every day and sit in front of the piano and I start. And you have to be doing it for inspiration to come. So when you sit there, you know, one of the things you said today is I'm not inspired. I'm like going, well, yeah, you're not. Not if you're driving in the car or, or at the grocery store. No, I mean, inspiration doesn't happen there. Inspiration happens where? In the studio. studio, and you start going, and then all of a sudden something happens, and you go, ah! Oh. And it's almost like, you know, the Greeks called it genius. Your genius steps in, and you go, oh, and then you can't stop. And then your husband's going, where's dinner? And you go, forget dinner! <laughs> That's the fun part. But it doesn't happen all the time. But when it does, it's better than anything else you guys could do. <laughs> Nothing that you spend time with is more important than the, the time that you spend creating. At the end of your life, what are they going to do? Say, oh, she kept a really nice house. Mm -hmm. Most of you put house cleaning above painting. Oh, sure. And so they go, my dearly departed here, we're gathered here to celebrate this person's <laughs> life. She had a clean car. 
She made sure that all of her phone calls were made. You know, outside of that. No, I've gone to artist funerals and the entire church was packed with their paintings. And people were sitting there marveling at what they created. And what's really extraordinary is that a lot of times people will, will come to me in class and they'll go, you know, it's really sad because my family doesn't really care about the work I do. I give them, in fact, that happened yesterday with Jennifer, remember? And she says, I gave my brother a painting and he never said thank you. And she goes, I'm never going to give anybody a painting again. I, I have no talent. That's how the whole thing started. I have no talent. I haven't grown. So the, because her brother didn't say thank you, she all of a sudden started making this whole story about how her paintings suck. You know. And so she's sitting there. And this is not a lie. This is, you remember that. So, 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 so she, she has this big story about her paintings suck. And, um, and so I, I told her, I said, that's not true. But the thing is, when I've seen students pass away, what's interesting, I've watched the kids fight over the paintings. And they really don't care about the jewelry. Yeah, they're waiting for you to die so that they can get your money. But they'll spend that. But ultimately, their grandkids and the great-grandkids, what they're going to be passing on is the legacy that you put on canvas. So that's what's really extraordinary. Okay, so if you want to motivate yourself, you have to come from inside. You have to realize what you produce is really valuable. And through your work, you can touch, move, and inspire other people. Because that's what art does for our society. Touch, moves, and inspires. Okay? Okay. Any questions? Good.